Hi, welcome to Boots to the Ground. I am Christy Hill, and this is Man of God. Uh, Tony Hill, hallelujah. And the love of my life, my husband. And um, we're going to tell you a little bit about Boots to the Ground. You may or may not know, so we're just going to tell you just in a nutshell anyway. Okay, um, this started oh, years ago when uh, we had a meeting and someone asked us, what do we have inside of us that we could duplicate and we could train others to do? And long story short, we said we could train people how to hear the voice of God. We started with one woman, just one young lady we mentored. Then we had leaders from five different churches. We bought curriculum. Um, in the beginning, we were using Sean Bowles curriculum. Um, and if you don't know Sean Bowles, his last name is B-O-L-Z. Um, go to YouTube, look up short videos, anything under three minutes and or four minutes even, it'll blow your mind. Words of knowledge, he moves in words of knowledge like unbelievably. But anyway, so we started in our living room and it just grew and continued to grow. We did 12 week sessions at a time, took off four weeks and start, we would do 12 weeks again. And we ended up with people all over the place. I mean, sitting on the fireplace, sitting on the floor, sitting on the stairs, looking over the balcony. It was the biggest blessing while we grew, we all grew together uh, in intimacy with the, with the Lord and in our gift of prophecy. So you want to say anything more about that, babe? In the process of that, you know, you're always going to develop relationships, you know, and in the midst of when God shows up, you're going to draw all sorts of people. And the most important thing is that remember, God loves everyone and we want to be stewards of what he put in our hands, uh, handling it with excellence and but handling it with grace. Mm -hmm. So it was a great opportunity for us to grow and for us to learn. And so it was a blessing on both sides of seeing God move and operate through different vessels and different ways. And yet on the other side of it, as we learned, we would develop what we call our uh, standards, you know, the do's and don'ts about what the prophetic to be a blessing to people rather than it being a thing of hurt. You know, you always want to be a blessing and not uh, a curse to people. So anyway, uh, that was our heart's desire and the Lord orchestrated it. And we just continue to follow his guidance and his leading. And it's been an amazing journey. It's been a journey that has developed our walk with the Lord in a more intimate way, in a closer walk with him, you know, and you learn to trust on him more than you trust yourself. And I think that's the biggest thing about hearing the voice of God is that you're not trusting yourself. You're trusting that Jesus inside you is speaking loud and clear. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we do different teachings. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to kick the camera. Um, we do different teachings and we start with growing in intimacy with Christ. Since this is a specialized training, equipping and activating group, yes. very, very specific about simple prophecy. OK, we don't go into the gift of prophecy much and we sure don't go into the office of a prophet. This is designed for every believer because you can hear the voice of God. And one of the things that we found whenever everybody was coming together is everybody hears differently. The primary way people hear the voice of God and the primary way he speaks is through the written word of God, mm -hmm. the inerrant alive, living word of God yes. and through revelation from the Holy Spirit that some people hear. And really, we always kind of think that's the way God speaks and that's the only way he speaks. But we're all made differently and God is infinite. So he has so many different ways to speak to people. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, people will feel we have feelers. Some people just know and don't understand how they know. Um, other people see visions, dreams, um, get impressions of crazy things in their mind. And other people just hear, audibly hear a word. And some people see words written um, kind of in the sky, I guess, in the air. Anyway, there's a lot of different ways and we embrace them all. They do have to line up with the word of God. We do not allow anybody to speak negative negative at all okay um everything that is said in this group is encouraging edifying building up for the body of christ we do uh, have the standards like my husband said and it was trial and error and we just took all of the 
<laughs> mistakes we made that we would Tony and I would sit down after each group and review what what didn't work and what did work and then we learned from them and so we do have the list of standards and we go over those in the first um, session and we hand them out we let people take them home or download them off the internet um, one of the most beautiful things that we do is after we do a little bit of teaching, we do something called a love seat. We, it's not that we choose really, it's we ask Holy Spirit, who do you want in that love seat today? And he shows us every time. And so we put a chair in the middle of the room. We ask God to show us his extravagant love heart for whoever's in that chair. We don't have to know him. We don't have to like him. Yes. And within a matter of moments, the Lord gives us his heart for them. And then we prophesy to them from the place of love. And if you can imagine an entire room, anywhere from 20 to 130, 150 people, all seeking God just for you. It, it's life changing beyond words. It's absolutely incredible. You want to add anything to that? Yes. Uh, what we had to, what we learned along the way is that maybe some people uh, are here clearer than others, or some are more trained or confident. And you may have a word or two, and someone else may have six words. So we had to learn to teach the people that what are the two they have the most. We say fire. fire on them, you know, that rather than giving a list, you know, because if you got 25 people that have a word and you want to uh, limit the time and that you know, everyone's pouring into that person. So whatever the God is really highlighting that for you to speak is the most important thing. And we'll go into detail on that whenever we go on to the standards and we'll be teaching just a standard or two in different video clips. Yes. But the most amazing thing is that. Uh, when God speaks to us, he's always encouraging us. Now, there's times when God is Abba Father come alongside and during loving. And there's a time when God is disciplining us to say, hey, I'm not disciplining you because I'm mad at you. I'm disciplining you because I love you and I want you to come alongside of me. So uh, that's the fathers. And that's what the fathers do. But mostly what the Lord lead us to do is to encourage people to draw closer to the Lord that he can inspire, give them understanding of who they are and enlighten them that he sees them through the blood of Jesus rather than how they see themselves through their own eyes. So, amen. So when we started, we would meet for 12 weeks, take off for four weeks, meet for 12 weeks, take off for four weeks. And we usually had a different crowd except for a handful. And then word just kind of got out at how much God was speaking through everyone in the room, not just one or two people. It was so beautiful. Um, but we also learned that people will prophesy through their pain. So if somebody has a wound, we need to help them get healed, whole and healed. Mm -hmm. And so we offer a couple of different avenues of getting healing, knowing who you are in Christ. And that doesn't mean God won't speak through you. It just means that you will prophesy a much purer form of what God is speaking if you're whole and healed and delivered. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely delivered. Um, I want to tell one of my favorite, we have so many, actually, I want to tell two favorites, but one, we had a young man that would come every single time. I mean, he's been a part of us forever. And he always said, how come I don't get any words? Everybody's getting these incredible words. And I see something like a busted water balloon or something. It was so funny. And he did. He had some pretty crazy words that this one night we went long. It was our last session of the year, and we had a single woman sitting in the chair, and he said, I just saw Jesus sitting in front of you on his knee, putting a glass slipper on your foot like your Cinderella. The clock struck midnight right then. It was so cool. So when a spirit of prophecy is present, it doesn't have to be a person. That's going to prophesy because even the rocks will cry out. Amen. 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 You know, so like you say, uh, I want to say screening, but, you know, you just stand back and you watch what God is doing. And when you're in that environment, even though you may not think you can prophesy, being in that environment will activate something on the inside of you that will, God will lead you to say, you know what I've given to you and what we call like puzzle pieces, you know, might just have a part of what someone what God is saying, he may just give you a word. He may say, 
uh, you saw a green apple and in your mind you think a green apple what kind of sense does that make you know but the name of the game is we call it a puzzle piece because what you saw someone else may have saw another part of it, and it gives them confidence to speak that out because of what you said so anyway uh, as we go through the standards and so forth and details of things we'll talk more along those lines there mm -hmm. but it's just an opportunity for you to submit yourself under the leadership and the guidance of the Holy Spirit and him speaking through you that shifts someone's life. It even shifts your life because you have more confidence in what you're saying and what you're doing through the Spirit of God. So, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, um, we do teachings and we begin with growing in intimacy with Christ. We do uh, a section on circumcision of the heart. Um there's just different teachings and they all center around growing closer to the Lord and getting whole healed and delivered. That's pretty much the gist of it. So while we do have a game plan for every session, we do submit it to the Holy Spirit. And we say, if you want to show up and just wreck us, have your way. We just try very hard to be intentional in our relationship with the Holy Spirit and let him lead because this really isn't our ministry. It is his ministry and he loves it, loves it, loves it, loves it. God loves people. And the, the Bible, whether we do or not, you know, the Bible tells us in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world. God loved all people that he gave his son. And so in the midst of that, love is giving and God is always given to us each and every day whether we understand it or not. And so the most important thing is that having a heart of the Father moving through you and upon you to encourage, to inspire, to uh, give confidence to, it shifts a person's life because everyone is going through something. We just don't know what, to what degree that is, but God does know, so amen. So the scriptural basis that this whole ministry was founded on is Joel 2.28. And afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Um, everything we do, we try our best to make sure it lines up with scripture. And we have other scriptures. So if you have a pen and paper, if you want to write these down. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 5, you can look in the King James Version, is about prophecy in tongues. Uh, Numbers eleven twenty nine, Exodus twenty nineteen, and Romans twelve six through seven. It talks about the different gifts that God has in the Spirit of God, and so the most important thing is that we teach is that it's being connected to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that will bring forth the fullness of what God has for you and what He's called you to. And in this training op, we're just giving you words a segment of what God has laid on our heart to share with you and to pour into you that the Father does talk and he gave you ears to hear his voice. It's just you have the confidence of what he's saying to you. You know, it is it is what it is, that it is a Father. So, amen. Go ahead, sweetie. Some of the things that we have taught are for sure simple prophecy, healing through words of knowledge, knowing the times and seasons, getting and keeping a healed heart, prophetic intercession, prophetic evangelism, prophetic worship. And lately it has been a lot of hosting the presence of God. So something that's very important to us is, first of all, you have to understand we are not a church. Um, we are more of a parachurch ministry where we train and equip different people in the body of Christ and a lot of pastors, leaders and things. Um, but we're not a church. So we ask everyone who comes to any of our meetings to leave at the door before you walk in any religion, any political mindsets, any uh, denominational differences, any racial differences, any judgments, any preconceived ideas of what you think the night's going to look like, any negative thoughts or attitudes, check them at the door. That's that's really, really important. We do a very intentional job of stewarding the atmosphere in the place. So if you want to receive as much as you possibly can from the Lord, we ask you to look up those scriptures. 
because different people learn differently and this will engage a different part of your brain than being taught um, in person and the hands-on practice. So we do ask that you look those up and it even helps if you read them out loud and in front of a mirror. If you wanna know what prophecy is, simple prophecy, we encourage that. But then we also show videos or we post them in the Hill Prophetics Facebook page. Yes. Um, they're faith builders. A lot of them are words of knowledge from Sean Bowles. Um, a lot of them are supernatural from prophets like Bob Jones, the late great Bob Jones. Um, just to open your eyes to the possibility of what God can do through you, because if he does it through someone else, he can and will do it through you if you pull on him and expect it. So anyway, we ask everyone to leave that at the door. And when we go into worship, we ask that you tune out everybody and just make sure it's you and Jesus, just you and the Lord. And we ask that you put on a listening ear. A lot of times when you're in the worship, it is about you vertically just you, but then we want you to listen because he'll speak to you about you, but sometimes he'll show you something about the other people, even though we don't have them in the love seat yet. Yes. Um, periodically, the Lord will lay on our heart a word for the corporate room, and when we share that, we give lots of ministry opportunities. That's probably the biggest thing is hands-on ministry. We pray for people, a lot of people. We have a great team behind us. By the way, shout out to the volunteers that have come along and have supported yes. us for years. Um, also, another thing we give an um, share the cost opportunity. It is very important that everybody bring something to give. We don't want to encourage takers. If we just continue to give and give and give, and Tony and I continue to support the ministry fully, and you aren't sowing into it, you won't get the fullness of what God has for you. All of those things trigger honor. When you give in stewarding your finances, we don't care if it's a dollar or if it's a thousand dollars, we don't. God is gonna provide, but for your sake, we ask that you try to bring something and if you have great, great needs, let us know. We'll pray you through it. We'll get other people involved. But anyway, that's another sidebar. So this session of Boots to the Ground is beginning in September. Okay, the, the second and fourth Fridays of every month, uh, September, I'm going to look up the dates, September um, 9th and 23rd, the second and fourth Fridays, October 14th and 28th, the second and fourth Fridays. November, only the 11th, because the fourth week is Thanksgiving. Then we take off for Christmas and we start back up January through May. And then that's a, a lot longer of a session. So it's always going to be the second and fourth Fridays, unless the Lord shifts it up. Um, I don't know. What else, baby? Um, the most important thing is that when you come, come with an open heart. Allow the Father to give you eyes to see, ears to hear of what the Spirit of God is doing. And more times than none, what we call is like as you're praying, God may highlight someone in the room. And what we call it just seemed like the Holy Spirit is sitting on that person and God has a word for that person. You say, Lord, okay, what is it you're doing and what is it you want to do? And so as we go through that process there, we're always giving everything back to the Father and that this is, these are his people. This is his ministry and he's teaching them how to steward it well. So the same gifting that's inside of you as you learn to give in what God is doing in this ministry, God be able to bless your ministry as you go. Remember your as life. A, your life. Remember as a man sows, so shall he reap. So the most important thing is that you're sowing into what God is doing to glorify his kingdom to further the work of the kingdom of God and to bring forth a unity of the body of Christ to a place of maturity and a place of oneness in mind, one in spirit and one in soul that we're giving glory to Jesus. So it's not about us. It's not about what we have need of. Like I say, does God really need your money? No, but what God's wanting you to be a blessing to the kingdom so that those that are serving the Lord can continue to do what it is he's asking them to do. So, mm -hmm. amen. Okay, with that said, 
We have volunteer opportunities. Are you excited? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We're excited. <laughs> <laughs> so we do. We want to give you an opportunity to volunteer with Boots to the Ground. Um, we have people that we need at the registration table as people are coming in that will help greet and help them sign in. We need a videographer. Uh, just someone who can do little video clips that we can post on social media. Um, I have roaming videographer, kind of the same thing. The first one is more of videoing the teachings. We need a photographer. We need a social media monitor, someone who can watch the social media and tell us if anybody's saying anything hateful or if anybody has something that we need to address. Um, hospitality, we provide snacks and drinks and we would like someone in to help us with the hospitality part. Um, security. We always want our women to have somebody, a gentleman, walking them to their cars or watching them make, to make sure they get to their cars safely. And if anybody comes in that is questionable, given that, like my husband said, the um, prophetic is a very different gift and it draws very unusual people. Um, sometimes new age people, sometimes people who worship Buddha, and it's just very different. And like he said, we've got to learn to love them all. Uh, we need a setup crew. We need a reset crew because the people who bless us with the facilities, we want it to look all set up and ready for what they have next. We need an intercessory team. We need greeters and worship teams. So if you are interested in helping us in any way with Boots to the Ground, we would greatly appreciate it if you would reach out to us, okay? You can go to hillprophetics.com or um, hillprophetics at gmail.com. You could shoot us an email, and if you have our phone number, you could do that as well, okay? So just let us know. We need volunteers, and we love our volunteers. And we're also implementing campus pastors or facilitators this time. And we, those are the people that have been with us for a while that we really, really can trust to not um, do damage to the people that come in, but will really bless people as they come and go. And so we're hoping to have teams set up that can volunteer here and in Edmond and sometimes just switch them up. And then we have um, a church in Chandler that would like for us to bring a team out there and do a boots to the ground one evening, which will probably be October or something like that. And we need a team to go there. So if you're interested, please let us know. We love you. And thanks for coming to Boots to the Ground. Amen. Amen. And thank you for watching this video and watching what the Lord is continuing to do throughout the body of Christ. And each part plays its part to bring forth the fullness of what God has for his kingdom. So amen and amen. Amen.